1959 season? The thing I remember about our team is we got along well and we all played well together. Our line only averaged 156 pounds and the backs were 157. Uh, we were small, slow, didn't have a great deal of talent, but we had a lot of heart. We had kids from Choptack and Beach Creek, kids from Cuba and Spruce Pine, kids from Rogersville, Persia. There were kids from Preston's home. We didn't have any size or strength or speed. And I do think we had some boys that uh, were athletic. And bar none, whatever they had to do, we got the job done. Well, well I think back on those 40 years later, it was a combination of we had a coach that knew how to win a football game. The intensity of the, the boys wanting to win, they, they had a great desire to win. This team probably um, played better collectively than they did, would have played individually. Everybody wanted to win, and I remember in games that we were behind then, like we were being outplayed, but I always thought like the back of my mind that something's going to happen, we're going to win this football game. It had to be a team effort. We didn't have like great athletes that were going to sign Division I scholarships and, uh, or athletes of size and speed. It, it was just team chemistry and effort. I think the, the secret to the whole thing was that the boys had the desire. When they answered the call in the summer of 1959, they were greeted with a hot August sun. They were the sons of farmers and lawyers, merchants and mechanics. They were the Rogersville Warriors. When the young men with names like Swamp Woman, Moo Moo, Snake and Galdi put on the pads and bonnets, not much was expected. After all, the team averaged only 156 pounds. What could not be measured by any scale, however, was the heart and fight in the 1959 Rogersville Warriors. If I had been asked at that time to say or predict what our, what our schedule would have been, I would have guessed that we might have won maybe six and four or five and five. I did not, I had no inkling, and I don't think anybody else did. And so the moment approaches. The fans are standing. The band is playing. The team is poised, ready to race onto the field. And now, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you listen, it's football time in Rogersville. Jonesboro opened the season for the Warriors at home. Joe Davis, the Warriors head coach, was careful not to reveal the game plan for the following week against the Warriors rival Churchill. The Warriors did not show much in defeating Jonesboro 32 to 12. Warrior fullback J.B. Vaughn had a field day for the Warriors, rushing for 182 yards and three touchdowns. His touchdowns came on runs of 42, 36, and 49 yards, with the total yardage coming from only 13 carries. Other touchdowns were scored by Ronnie Hill on a pass from quarterback Larry Boyd and a short touchdown run by Boyd. The favorite story I enjoy the most, I guess, is uh, when we played Churchill. Our second game, they were favored probably two or three touchdowns. We caught them a little bit 
flat that game because we weren't expected to be very good. It was early in the season. They were loaded and they had just lots of talent. And their fullback was probably 6'3", about 230. He'd take, Ronnie would take one leg, I'd take the other leg, and he'd still drag us for 10 yards. Probably one of the better teams in Upper East Tennessee. And early in the game, we, we got a touchdown ahead, and then about midway through the second quarter, Coach Davis, we had a trick play called Sally Rand. And Coach Davis called Sally Rand and sent Gordon Crance in. And Gordon was, a, was, our, was our, our passer who threw the ball off of a reverse halfback pass. And we caught them so flat in that, uh, in that, uh, on that halfback pass on that reverse halfback pass, and Gordon threw the ball down the field to Roy Howard, who caught the ball, and Roy didn't have a great, wasn't a, uh, what I would describe as a speedy person, but he outran their halfback and sneaked into the end zone. We had Churchill 13 to nothing at the halftime. Nobody expected us to be ahead of Churchill 13 to nothing at halftime. And of course it made them mad. They came back mad and fierce and tough as they were, and. We were all sitting there a little bit stunned about the fact that we were ahead of Churchill and that we had, uh, uh, we, we were even in the ball game. And so we knew that when we went back out on the field at halftime, or after halftime, that Churchill was going to come out with blood in their eyes, and believe me, they did. And they had a kid up there, his name was Phil Branson, and he went on to play pro football. And Roy Howard and I were the two inside linebackers, and I looked over and I said, they're going to give the ball to Phil Branson. He's coming off tackle. They gave the ball to Phil Branson and Moo Moo, <laughs> and I hit him at the same time and stopped him on that extra point, and I'll always remember that. And so we ended up tying the game. We, we did, thought that if we were able to, you know, stay on the field with them, we could play with about anybody. And I like to tell people that, uh, they, we didn't tie them, they tied us. Newport, Tennessee is not a slave, safe place to go. Newport, always tough, was even tougher on their home turf. We played Newport the week after we had tied Churchill. And of course, most of us felt like when we walked, walked the day after the Churchill game, we'd been hit by a semi-truck or had been in a rodeo riding bulls or what have you, but, uh, and most of us were still hurt or beaten up from the Churchill game, and we go to Newport, and they tie us six to six, so. Uh... The Warriors would face Sevierville for the third tough game in a row. The first half of the game saw the Smoky Bears push the Warriors all over the field. The Warriors' touchdown came on a run by Bob Bass with the extra point failing. And Bob Swamp Woman Bass picked off a Smoky Bear pass late in the game and ran 35 yards for a touchdown, tying the game 12-12. The money is on the line. The ball is spotted at the two-yard line as Rogersville in a tie game. It's 12-12, going for the extra point. Up under the center, that is Boyd. This will be Sevierville digging in, hoping for a tie. This is Boyd, keeping to the right side. He squirms, he battles, he fights, he scores! And Rogersville leads 13 to 12. For the first time in four weeks, the Warriors would face a team they were supposed to beat. Rogersville traveled to Linview and did what they expected to do, whipping the Lynx 21 to six. The Sullivan Pirates rolled into Rogersville for the Rogersville homecoming game, determined to end the surprising Warriors undefeated streak. The Warrior defense would prove what a solid unit it was by getting a blocked punt from Dan Snake Brooks early in the game. So it's fourth down. Rogersville has held, and right now Jones will drop deep for Sullivan to punt. Ready for the snap, there it is. The punt is up, blocked! It's blocked, and that's Dan Brooks, the first man there. He's coming from his linebacking position. Also chasing down the loose ball, Ronnie Hill. There's Horner, Leroy, and also McGinnon. Everybody trailing the football as the punt has been blocked. Again, the Warriors caught the Pirates expecting a run from Vaughn, and Boyd spread around the right end for 16 yards and the first Warrior touchdown. Quarterback is Boyd. 
This is Boyd faking to Bass. This is Boyd keeping the ball as he circles the right side of the line. He pulls it down. He's at the 15. He's at the 10. He's at the 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Touchdown, Warriors! Larry Boyd for 18 yards. The second quarter would see the Warriors extend their lead when Roy Howard slipped behind the Pirate defense and Boyd hit Howard with a long pass play covering 65 yards and extended the Warriors' lead. Rogersville led at halftime 13 to 7. The third and fourth quarters would again see gutty defensive play by the Warriors. Third down as Sullivan comes to the line. Malier dropping back to throw. Looking man comes open. Pass across the middle. Intercepted. That's J.B. Vaughn who is there to intercept. And the pressure up front came from Chili Sanders, from George Lane, and Tom Carney. Pass has been intercepted by the Warriors. This is Rogersville coming to the line. Ball rests at the one yard line. This will be Sullivan massing up in front, trying to hold as the handoff goes. Hill dives, touchdown for the Warriors. The big play during the drive was a 30 yard pass from Boyd to Brooks. All of a sudden, Warrior fans realized they were watching a miracle with the Warriors undefeated in six games. Jefferson City, always a tough opponent for the Warriors, came to town expecting to end the Warriors' winning streak. But the Warriors were ready to play. Ronnie Hill, left halfback, would carry the brunt of the attack for the Warriors. So Jefferson defends with a six-man front as Rogersville comes to the line. Up under the center, Boyd. Give goes to Hill through the right side. Hole opens. He's at the 20, to the 15, to the 10, to the 5. He scores for Rogersville. The solid Warrior defensive unit would only give up one touchdown to Jefferson City. Again, gutty defensive play was evident from James Horner, Walt Leroy, Chili Sanders, George Lane, Perry McGinnis, Tom Carney, and Ron Bundrant, all of whom put licks on the Jefferson City backs. So Rogersville comes to the line, ball rests at the Warrior 40-yard line. Boyd gives it off this time to J.B. Vaughn. Gets running room left side, breaks through the hole. Touchdown, Rogersville! In a game that could easily have gone against the Warriors, the Warriors remained undefeated. The Warriors pulled out another big victory over a talented Jonesville team by a score of 32 to 12. Again, the Warriors were led by the defense consisting of Sanders, Lane, Lard Carney, Horner, Leroy, Bundrant, McGinnis, and other defensive standouts. We had to beat Ketron to tie Churchill for the conference championship. We played Ketron in a downpour. <laughs> the night before, it started raining. And not only did it rain all night long, it rained all day. But it had rained, I guess, for three or four days, and there was so much, so much rain on the field that actually when you'd make a tackle and go under, the, your whole head would be underwater at times. The field was a quagmire, and there was water standing everywhere, and every time somebody would tackle the other person, you'd skid about 30 yards. We were playing a team that we were far superior than. We were playing Hampton. We were supposed to just beat Hampton. That was our last game of the season. We went up there to play Hampton, and it was one of those nights where it rained, it sleeted, it snowed, the wind blew, it hailed. Just about as miserable a night on the football field as you, you could ever want him. It, it rained the first quarter. The wind blowed, and it turned cold the second quarter. It snowed the last half, and, and uh, it was just one of those miserable nights. Snow was blowing across the ground, it was cold, and Larry Boyd broke loose on about a 90-yard run, just broke the game up, and I forgot we won the game like 30, 33 to nothing. The Warriors finished off Hampton 31 to nothing and finished the season undefeated. As a football team, we were getting better as the season went along because uh, the last uh, three or four games of the season, we didn't give up but like two touchdowns the whole time, and the last two teams we held scoreless. 
So, with a line that averaged 156 pounds and a backfield that averaged 157 pounds, the Rogersville Runts completed the season undefeated. Postseason honors did come the Warriors' way. Coach Joe Davis would be named Rotherwood Conference Coach of the Year. Four Warriors would make first team all Rotherwood Conference, and three would make second team all Rotherwood Conference. Were the Warriors the best Rogersville high school team ever? Probably not. There were many other good teams, but there would never be another undefeated Rogersville team after the 1959 Warriors. So, for a brief shining moment, the 1959 Warriors would go down in history as one of the best teams ever to set foot on the Rogersville high field, surprising not only themselves and their coach, but every fan in Rogersville who followed the Warriors that year. began to believe in themselves and believe in what I was trying to do and uh, we uh, just got on a roll. It kind of grew as the season went on. There was a lot of uh, camaraderie among those players. Coach Davis did, did a heck of a job. I don't know that anybody else in the state of Tennessee did as good a job he did with the least amount of talent as we had. Just a lot of hard work. I think the, the, uh, they out-hustled a lot of the other teams. There are a number of our team members who stay in touch with each other and we've, we've remained good friends. chemistry and coupled with the, with some guys that just wanted to go out there and work and just believed in themselves and went in the game to win. It was just one of those fun years it, it, when you, uh, you know when you're winning obviously it is fun. We had a good time. 